Welcome to Show Jumping Life and our new series, Two Minute Trainer Tips, where we'll be working with trainers and other experts in the world of show jumping to bring you the latest information and techniques on how to get the most out of your show jumping life. Whether you're new to show jumping or you're ready to take your horse and training to the next level, the question we most often get asked is, where do I get started? To answer that question, we're heading over to the AIG $1 million Grand Prix in Thermal, California. We're here with the world's top riders and trainers and we're asking them what's the foundation for training a great show jumping horse? I'd have to say the foundation for training a great show jumping horse is flat work. In my opinion, uh, flat work is the biggest foundation of any, any horse. And yes, it does mean a lot of groundwork and lots of circles in the sand. Is fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. Start with your flat work and always insist on that. You know, I'm really a believer in getting the horses really fit. I need them to be strong and fit. Bertillon Denemothy, coach of the U.S. equestrian team from 1955 to 1980, summed it up in his book, Classic Show Jumping. He said, Many riders find the principles of equitation and the physiology of the horse boring and can't wait to start attacking fences. My experience is, however, that when they never achieve a clear understanding of the basic principles, they never learn to ride really well. No matter how great their natural talent, they will always fall far short of realizing their full potential. To illustrate these basic principles, we're going to use the training scale or training pyramid. While there are some variations to the training scale, the United States Dressage Federation summarizes it as rhythm, with energy and tempo, relaxation, with elasticity and suppleness, connection, acceptance of the bit through acceptance of the aids, impulsion, increased energy and thrust, straightness, improved alignment and balance, collection, increased engagement, lightness of the forehand, and self-carriage. Some will argue minor variations in the naming or order of these elements, and that's most likely because each element of the training scale works in conjunction with one or more of the other parts. One of the elements is never used in isolation. Furthermore, while often illustrated as a pyramid or building blocks, they should not be considered as steps where one can only be followed upon the completion of the previous element. Our next video will focus on rhythm.